Hey guys, sorry about the delay in getting this, but this is my workflow for using Lightroom 4 for my aviation photography. Um, as you'll see, this one hasn't had anything done at this stage, it's just all the default settings, whereas this one here is a previously edited version of Qantas 1 the other day. So, working with this one, and you'll just see here this little part here, that's just because I had the GPS on in my 6D. First up, uh, I go down and correct the lens uh, adjustment. Uh, this just takes out a little bit of the distortion that's in there and a little bit of the vignetting that was up in the top corners. And this is automatically uh, discovered by the software. There's a whole heap of profiles that are already inbuilt into Lightroom. Um, these settings here for sharpening and noise reduction, um, I've learnt and used over the time of me doing this. So these are just the pre-settings that I always use and uh, have seemed to work well with me. As you see, I'm just entering the values and hitting tab to go to each individual section. Um, but that's just the quickest way for me. You might need to either use those or find your own and adjust accordingly. Uh, next thing I do, I go up to the top. Uh, here you'll see the crop um, rectangle box, uh, which I on this image I will just go to just forward of the nose and I like to keep the tower in this sort of image just because it's Sydney. Now, in trying to get it level, um, it's, I wouldn't use the actual runway here, as in Sydney that's on a downhill run, down to the end of 1-6 right. Um, so I just tend to use the tower over here. Now you can use the crop angle, um, just as long as you can find an edge, and then work up that way, which that is not right, but or you can just go to the side of the image there and pick something and that's probably going to be just about right there for me anyway. Um, this part here and this part here are leveling so by grabbing that and just bringing that down a little bit or you can use the rule of thirds being that grid line and that grid line there and just having something in the middle of the aircraft as in in the middle of the frame like I've done. Um, and you can see that way there, it's probably still just a tad high, so I might just bring it down a little bit. And that's somewhere there where I'm pretty happy. So we'll crop that out. Um, again, now in the camera I use auto white balance and um, depending on the time of day, I generally use 5900 for the uh, temperature of all my images. It just seems to have what's worked. Um, now that might be a little bit bright, I might just bring it down one or two points. Um, contrast, I always add 10. Um, again, it's just what I've learnt works well with my camera and lens combination. Um, I like to bring some of the highlights down about 35 units, sometimes just 30. Um, and then shadows, so all the dark areas like under this wing here and under the rear part there, I will add a bit of light and just like that. Whites I'll always boost by 5 pending just to make sure it's not overblown and then the black areas I will reduce by 10 just to en enhance the black a little bit. Clarity 10, vibrance 10 and saturation of 5. That's the sort of basic one. Then coming up into this panel here which is the HSL colour and black and white I will bring out individual colour spectrums that is in, within the image and I'll just boost those individually. So for red just five. There's nothing really orange in there, but I'll just give it a one. Same with two for the yellow. Now green, because there's a bit of vegetation about the place, I might give it five, just see how it looks. Or ten, just to make it pop that little bit more. Five for aqua, and let's try twenty for blue, just to give that a little bit of extra pop. Um, and basically, that's it for the image. Now when I export, I will uh, just click export and export. Now this you can do however you like. Um, I always do it to, to this way where I'm naming the, um, the aircraft via Rego, its company, its type, its uh, departure, which is 16 right, and uh, the airport that I've used. And then I'll just navigate to where it's got to go which this can just go back into, uh, let's put it back into here, 
No, let's just go to the desktop. Um, was it 23rd? Was it 23rd? So I'll put it back into that folder. Put it there. And 23rd. Um, now I also do it as in custom name and original file number, which is that part there. That's the, the image number that it was taken with. Um, I always do long edge at 2048. That's my uh, signature that you always see down in the bottom corner. And I get it to open up automatically in CS6. So let's let that happening. Now you can change that as you like, um, depending on where I am uploading it to. Any minute now, it should open up. Now you can also do presets for those. I um, will probably do them soon just to in, uh, increase the speed of my editing. Um, but for now, I'm happy with doing each individual image that way. So there's the uh, edited Lightroom version. So all I will do now just to do it a little bit more sharpening is duplicate layer. Just hit OK. Control Shift U, working in the background copy only, not in the, the, the original image, but only in the background copy. And then I'll go up to Filter, Other, and High Pass at 0.8. I'll then overlay the image, background, flatten, filter again, noise, reduce noise, leaving, and using those uh, settings. Okay, that's it, job done, and always save. So then going to the original file, just get rid of that, going to the original file, so it's on the desktop, 23, that's today's one, opening that up, and there's the completed image. Thanks guys, hope it works for you. If you've got any questions, uh, just send me a message and ask away. Thanks guys.